Welcome to Victoria University's Graduate Online Information Session. Um, tonight we'll be discussing the benefits of um, studying a Master of Clinical Exercise Science and Rehabilitation. And from Victoria University's TV studio, we are live here with Dr. Andre Nelson, who is a Senior Lecturer in Clinical Exercise. Andre, welcome. Thanks, Hans. Uh, Andre, we'll, we'll kick off with um, a, a basic question uh, to, for you to explain to us what an exercise physiologist actually does and is. Yeah, thanks Hans. Great question to start with. Uh, so in Australia, an, an accredited exercise physiologist is an allied health practitioner who works with clients with a range of, of chronic health conditions typically um, and injuries. And so they're an exercise specialist um, and they work very closely with those clientele to help improve their overall health and well-being and treat the signs and symptoms of their chronic conditions or injuries. Um, and so that profession's been around for around about 15 years and there is a professional accrediting body in Australia, Exercise and Sports Science Australia, um, that, that practitioners can become accredited with. Um, so there's, there's that element of uh, a professional organisation also overseeing that profession. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, during these very strange and, and challenging times of, of a pandemic, mm. uh, which very much is, you know, a health-related context that we've never experienced before, yes. how are exercise professionals going to deal with the aftermath of the pandemic and innovate the industry and, and you know, look at their profession in a different way? Yeah, it's certainly changed uh, radically how we deliver exercise in particular. Um, so if we look at what's happening even within, within our own courses as a microcosm of, of what's going on more broadly, um, we've moved from face-to-face -face placement, working with clients, um, our students working with clients, for instance, in our internal clinic, we've moved to delivering exercise to those clients in their own home via initiatives like telehealth. So for those who don't know, telehealth is effectively delivering uh, health services via telecommunications mediums. So for instance, we'll use Zoom and Skype and those types of, of platforms to um, engage with our clientele. And we'll have supervised student sessions, um, working with clients, um, doing exercise testing and delivery um, so that they're still able to meet their health and wellbeing outcomes even though, um, as with everyone, they're, they're remote and in isolation. Um, so that's certainly one of the, the largest innovations um, probably in a long time in the profession um, is that, that format for delivery. So our staff and our students are working to deliver those services and increasingly in terms of innovation, um, we'll be using technology to monitor um, clients, so that, that could be anything from monitoring heart rate, which we obviously already have, yep. to blood pressure, perceptions of effort, um, even things like movement quality. So wearable sensors will be in the future certainly a huge area of innovation. And so for students now, they need to start coming to grips with those sorts of technologies and use those technologies, which are things that we do in our courses, um, and, and actually apply those. So. Certainly from that point of view, that'll be one aspect of the innovation. And then I think there'll be other areas and niches that no one can really predict now that will develop. And so practitioners of the future, um, you know, the students coming in now, they'll need to create their own niches in some ways. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you're the chair of the course, but you also teach in the course. Yeah, I, I actually only teach one unit in the course. I'm probably one of the, the smallest amount of teaching. Uh, I actually teach the minor thesis unit. So, um, yeah, we'll probably talk more about the course um, soon, but um, one of the avenues that students can take is, is a research option, um, particularly if they want to go on and do a PhD. So I actually teach that unit mainly. Um, but across our staff, we have a number of other um, staff, obviously, who deliver the, the bulk of the rest of the units. And if we look at the profiles of those staff, um, you know, most of them are accredited exercise physiologists themselves and some academics are more on the academic side. Um, th those EPs and practitioners are the ones um, you know, dealing with our very hands-on suite of units that we have in the course. Yeah, can, can you talk a little bit about those, those, those units, uh, Absolutely. the core structure? Yeah, so look, the, the course structure, because we have a, a professional body who accredits courses, um, ESSA, 
Um, we, we have a somewhat prescriptive course, but then universities are left up to their own as to how they deliver those courses and, and putting their own flavour on things. And so at VU we have strengths in particular areas, such as um, our musculoskeletal domain. So we, we have different exercise domains, um, cardiorespiratory, metabolic diseases, cancer and renal, um, neuromuscular conditions, musculoskeletal conditions, exercise and mental health, which is a very topical and, mm -hmm. and massive area right now, yep. and even workplace health and, and occupational rehabilitation. So those broadly are the, the very practical domains that we work within. Uh, and then on top of that, we offer other units around clinical practice, managing cases, advanced case management, where you're dealing with lots of different practitioners, um, lots of different types of comorbidities of clients, and how do those mesh together? How do you, how do you fit as a practitioner within um, that interprofessional network? Um, so that's broadly the, the range of types of units that we have. Again, a very heavy practical emphasis um, to our particular course, which we think is a real strength uh, and uh, amazing placement network. Yep. Um, so our placements are built into some of the units within our course as well. So on, on that, can you talk a little bit about partnerships and the, yep. the various organisations that, that you work with? Yeah, VU is very lucky to have a, a really diverse placement network um, really across v Victoria, not just Greater Melbourne and Geelong area, but we, we spread out into regional areas as yep. well because we often have students coming um, from quite some large distances. Um, and so that placement network encompasses offering a range of different experiences for students. Um, we, we obviously have to cover different domains, so students will need expertise a uh, certain number of hours in, for instance, they need about 200 hours working with cardiorespiratory and metabolic clients. And then they, they have some stipulations around um, some more hours in the other domains as well. So students will come out with, um, a, in some ways, a generalised um, expertise that covers off the basic needs of, of being an accredited exercise physiologist, being able to work with clients with any of the, those conditions. But students are also able to tailor their placement experience. So if they have a particular domain they're really interested in, so for instance, we have a number of students who, who love sport, um, come from sporting backgrounds. Often they've come into the course because they've had a sporting injury, for instance. Yep. And so they, 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 they enjoyed, in some ways, the rehabilitation process. And so we're able to, through a dedicated placement coordinator, um, the student that sits down with that placement coordinator and they can map out their placement experience. So we can, we can offer a tailored experience to students as well. Um, and again, it's a, it's a really diverse placement uh, network throughout Victoria really. Um, so we are able to cater for students from diverse backgrounds and, and geographic locations. Awesome. So if, if that's one way <coughs> of um, th this university and this program standing out. Are there other ways that you feel we, we, um, we, we stand apart from other universities? And yeah, we also, we're, we're very lucky from a facilities point of view. Um, we have a great on-site clinic. Our clinic runs six days a week. So we have clients come in on-site where the students are. Students can come into the university during the day, do their placement and then attend evening classes. So in that regard, we have quite, um, quite a lot of flexibility in the sense of um, the students at attending their first placement, they don't have to commute lots of different places um, to, to get that initial placement experience. They're able to do that on site. So we're, we're very lucky to have an amazing um, facility. Students can check that out on the VU website. There's a yep. 360 degree camera shot from inside the clinic. So they can get a bit of a feel of that environment that they'll be in. We also run a lot of our classes out of that clinic in the evenings. So students will, will become very accustomed to that space and become very comfortable. So we're, we're really big on, on offering um, you know, an experience where the, the students um, feel welcomed, inclusive. A, a big part of their practice yep. is inclusiveness, working with clients from diverse backgrounds, understanding, empathy, um, those sorts of, those sorts of um, attributes make good practitioners and we try and bring that out. I guess the way we teach it is along those lines, the staff, you know, many of whom are practi practitioners themselves, share those qualities. Um, and so I think the support that we offer students and the, the experiences of our staff as well, who many of whom are active practitioners still, um, really sets us apart. And then within domains, we have some specialist expertise. Um, you know, we have Professor Itamar Levinger, who's a, 
uh, an authority in, in cardiovascular disease, bone metabolism, um, who's on our staff. We have um, you know, Rebecca Bryce, one of our practitioners, um, amazing musculoskeletal experience. So we have some great individuals within the team with, with outstanding experience as well. Yeah. D does industry know that? How, how, how do industry practitioners and, and organisations look at us? Yeah, look, I, I think they do. I, I, if you look at our, our placement network as, as, I guess, the reach of our university, because um, we, we work very closely with those placement partners, um, we have quite a high standing with them. Victoria University students are known for having really great hands-on skills. They, they're able to communicate well with clients. Um, they're able to work with people from really diverse backgrounds. So the feedback we get from, from um, you know, placements where our students go out on, um, the feedback we get from, from graduates who've gotten jobs in the profession because of the experiences they encountered at Victoria University, <clears throat> and those skills that they acquire on the job give them that confidence. Um, so I, I can hand on heart say I think our students are armed with a, a great skill set going out to be the practitioner that they want to be. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you, you, you talk a lot about network as well. Um, maybe um, a twofold question, the, the, the networking opportunities to connect with industry and get a foot in the door, but also the diversity of graduate opportunities. So where do people end up? And does networking help in that process? Yeah, so the first part of the question there, the actual network, I guess the first network is always um, the peer cohort. So who are your peers around you? Because you'll all graduate at the same time. Often they'll be competing for jobs with each other. Um, but many students move to lots of different regions and areas and you'll maintain those links with your peers. And so there's always going to be a peer support network and, and networking there. Uh, many of our students, they, they have Facebook pages um, linked to the course, so they, they run their own AMEP Facebook page. Um, that, that peer network will exist and continue into the future. Then you have the network associated with the staff that students work with. So staff um, work very closely in this in this area with um, students, staff and students work together. And there's a real shared experience, particularly in the clinic, um, where you're working with vulnerable populations, people, people with serious health conditions mm -hmm. that you're prescribing exercise to. Um, so there's, there's that shared experience and there's a networking that creates from that. And so often students get, um, you know, um, resumes and CVs and references um, associated with staff that they deal with. Then there's the placement networks. And again, students can tailor that experience. So if, if they're really passionate about a particular area, they're able to um, work with placements in that space. And often, you know, uh, experience shows that, that most of the students, um, their, their first job offers come from directly from a placement that they've done at, at Victoria University. Yeah. So if people <coughs> decide to come to study with us, they'll, they'll be with the university for, for if they study full time, one and a half years, C can you talk about what you expect in the next five years in the industry? And um, you know, uh, are there certain things that are going to dramatically change? Or yeah, look again. I think one of the big areas of change will be the importance of remote delivery. Um, you know, COVID's really, in terms of telehealth, it's probably brought telehealth as, a, as a, an initiative forward four or five years. So telehealth's really around delivery to remote services, uh, remote areas. So rural Australia, for instance, how do you deliver health services there? Yep. And the government has funding for telehealth um, and, and that will be a, an area of funding that changes radically. So we can expect some, a, a big um, forward um, encroachment of that. So there'll be funding opportunities there. Um, Exercise physiologists are able to claim uh, Medicare rebates for, for clients. Um, so that, that sort of area is expanding and the types of conditions that are funded. So for instance, recently, exercise therapy during chemotherapy um, is, is now paid for. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go see an accredited exercise physiologist to deal with the signs and symptoms of undertaking chemotherapy for cancer treatment yep. because it helps alleviate the severity and helps prevent things like muscle wasting. Um, so there's, there's that, that, those targeted um, conditions will, will only expand as the evidence base for exercise uh, expands, as research is done. Um, and so there's, there's lots of new opportunities that will appear in the next five years. 
I've sort of already mentioned wearables. That will be a huge area of innovation. Technology to, to monitor clients. Um, not just to monitor acute exercise, but also to monitor physical activity in general, yep. well-being. So well-being is this broad construct, health, you know, broad constructs, and lots of components to them. Um, future practitioners will need to be able to work with diverse populations, you know, indigenous populations. There's, there's lots of areas there where we can do more, and that is certainly being targeted by um, funding bodies and, and by the profession, by ESSA itself. Yep. So those are probably the key areas in the next five years. Yep. And I, I often use the, the sort of the line um, that the practitioners of the future will, will design their own jobs. So they'll be innovators who go out, entrepreneurs who can look, identify areas where there's, there's um, a deficit, where exercise and the skill set of the practitioner can be advantageous. Mm. In terms of the types of jobs that our graduates get now, um, very broad. A, a huge range from private practice, um, hospitals, you know, public um, system, community level, could be schools, could be in a hospital setting doing exercise testing or clinical testing, spirometry, you know, expired breath, things like that. Um, physical activity, so it could be management type positions, um, you know, affecting policy. Um, depending on how they progress. So a very broad range of areas where our, our students get um, get jobs. Excellent. Um, and you briefly spoke about having to have an innovative, you know, mindset that uh, people can create their own jobs. And because it is such an intensive course with lots of mm. um, client contact, can you talk a little bit more about the attitude that people have to have to be successful in, in these jobs? And then maybe even combine it a little bit with your own experience and, and, and passion for, for the field. Yeah, so look, in terms of those attributes that, that make a successful practitioner, I sort of already mentioned a few earlier, things like empathy, um, passion, that they have to really want to do it. Often our students have, have some sort of an experience, a formative experience, which, which conveys passion or, or importance of what they're doing to them. So many of our students have family members, for instance, with some sort of a chronic condition. Yep. And through seeing what their family member went through, um, they're able to, to develop that empathy and see how, um, how much it affects them. And so I think that certainly provides an element for many students or their own personal experience. So some sort of an experience is often formative and, and helps them understand what the client's going through. At the yep. end of the day, that's one of the key attributes there. Hmm. Um, did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and a little bit about your own background. How yeah, did you I've, I've got a bit of a funny background actually, Hans. So I, my background is strength and conditioning. So when I first moved to Australia, um, I actually started helping with one of the units in the Masters at that time. Uh, and I thought to myself, what, what is this profession? Because we don't have it in New Zealand. And I, I, was, I was naive to what an exercise physiologist was. And I sort of thought, is this a physiotherapist? And then I saw the scope of practice. It was a lot broader. Um, there were far more avenues for, for working with a broad, diverse range of clients, for specialising in different areas. So in that sense, I was, I was quite impressed with the profession and what they can actually do and apply exercise to. Um, and I, I guess, again, the staff are, are really the true experts, the accredited pre exercise um, physiologists themselves. And, and in some ways I can sit back and marvel at, I guess, the passion, mm. um, the skills and attributes of the team who deliver the program. And um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite nice to actually sit back and, and see how this profession works and the impact that, that staff and the, the graduates have. Um, I guess the reason I love the program um, is, you know, the people that I get to work with. Again, empathetic, passionate individuals. The students, I love seeing the students learning and developing and, and growing into practitioners. And as, as you know, you go to graduations and um, you see them walking off the stage and, and it's the best time. And then often they, they are the placements of the future for us. Yep. Um, so we still get to continue that relationship with them. And as a, with a strength and conditioning background, um, along with my academic career, um, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to see the parallels of a different exercise profession, working with, with very healthy individuals typically, and exercise physiology. And there's a lot of overlap between the professions, 
and a lot of shared synergies between them. So I guess that's why, that's why I'm passionate about it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Now, before we go to some questions from our audience, one final question. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the support systems that the university has in place for graduate level studies? Yeah, look, look our program is, is probably different to some of the others. We, we offer a lot of um, blended learning, so there is some flexibility in the course structure. Um, but we also have uh, substantial placement commitments, so students will be expected to undertake those placements. We offer tremendous support around the placement side of things, um, so we have a dedicated placement coordinator. That placement coordinator sits down with every student and helps map out their placement experience. Um, and we're able to amend and adjust things on the fly because of that, that level of support. Within units of study and, and the course more broadly, um, academic staff and myself as the course chair um, offer considerable support to students. Things pop up, um, be they personal or academic. Um, and then broadly there's the, the university support structures. So the uni university offers lots of fantastic support to students and not just in academic support but personal support as well. So yep. there's, there's a, a great level of support for our, for our students. Excellent. Now some questions from the audience. Um, You've briefly touched on this, but not in great detail. So um, uh, the question here is, what's the difference between a rehabilitation practitioner and a physiotherapist? And will your course include or cover any physiotherapy units or subjects? Yeah, so look, a, a physiotherapist is a diagnostic practitioner. So they really deal with, with the diagnosis um, and treatment um, of musculoskeletal injuries. Uh, an accredited exercise physiologist doesn't have a diagnostic capability, so they're not able to say that's what that condition is. But they will often be referred clients by physiotherapists or work with physiotherapists in the treatment of musculoskeletal injuries. So an, an accredited exercise physiologist is different in that regard, but there is overlap of the scope of practice, certainly in the, the, the treatment. And an accredited exercise physiologist has a much broader understanding of exercise as a whole. So it's not just acute rehabilitative exercise um, and pre prehabilitative, preventative, um, but more broadly it's around things like exercise for overall health and wellbeing, fitness, um, you know, it might be performance related, strength and conditioning. Um, increasingly that's an area EPs are getting into. And also, um, you know, mental health and wellbeing areas as well. So. The EP scope of practice in that sense is, is arguably much broader, yep. um, but um, they, they will work with physiotherapists and other allied health practitioners. Are, are they practi practicing together? Are they yeah, grouping? So and yeah, you'll, you'll often see in an interprofessional clinic, yep. you might see a dietitian, an EP, a physiotherapist, a GP, um, maybe even other practitioners as well, osteo. So they will often, in these sort of super clinic um, type structures, you'll often see multiple practitioners um, working in synergy um, and, and you know, working in different ways with clients. So while the physio might diagnose a particular musculoskeletal issue and some acute rehabilitative exercise, that client might go to the EP to engage in that exercise because they have a great understanding of coaching um, and also other exercise for improving overall fitness and, and you know, ability to do things. Yep. Um, another question is, why is ESSA so strict with accreditations and what does this mean for VU's course? Yeah, look, um, is, is ESSA strict? Look, they're, they're applying the, the minimum standard. So an important aspect of it is that um, you want the practitioners that you're working with, because they are often working with vulnerable populations, you want them well trained. Mm. Um, you, so there is a minimum standard that you have to address and so accredited courses you know, meet that minimum standard. It's a, it's a process going through the accreditation but it's for the benefit of the course um, and you know, that, that really gives I guess clients the benefit of knowing that their practitioner yep. is skilled. An EP, um, there are four year undergraduate degree programs in Australia but most are masters level and ours is, is a masters level. Um, course obviously, um, so you, you have that higher tier of qualification. Um, so it is an important part of it and yeah, it's, there's, there's prescription but you get that with any of the accredited um, allied health practices. Yep. Mm. Maybe as a final question, 
Um, has anyone been successfully employed through the placements? Yeah, look, uh, where do I start? Uh, I'll, I'll give an example for that one. One of our placements, um, Enhancing Movement Performance on Site, EMP on Site, um, they've taken on, I can't remember if it's three or four of our students in the last four or five years. So they're, they're a placement that deals in, in wearable technology. Um, they have workers in the workplace where their particular um, industry leading wearables and they monitor um, the, the movement of that individual. And so the practitioner um, works with that, that product and the software and develops from that um, therapeutic exercise or prehabilitative exercise in the workplace. And they go from workplace to workplace, uh, making sure workers are you know, not getting injured, are healthy on the, in the workplace. That, that, in, that business has expanded massively from a small Victorian-based one to interstate, working with Australia Post, right. um, supplying, you know, uh, working with Australian Post workers. And so they've taken on um, three or four of our students in the last three or four years. Surprisingly, all of them were named Nathan. So they were three of our Nathans of so just Nathan, if you're out there, yeah, yeah, apply yeah. for the course. Yeah, it's sort of an in joke with us, but that, yeah. that's one <laughs> example of many where um, our, our students often the work. It's it's not always full time work. Often graduates will will work um, more than one part time job in the first two to three years after graduating. The, the work is there, but it may not be full time in one place. Um, but what we do know is that within two or three years, most of them are employed in the, in the specialisation that they want to be in. So that might be working with cardiovascular clients, might be working in, in stroke rehab, whatever it is. So many students will, will want in some ways that diverse experience of jobs. Okay. And many of those initial jobs are part time, maybe two, three day, two to three day a week jobs. Um, and yeah, within two to three years, students are typically full-time within the area that they really want to be working in. Or they've gone out into private practice of their own, they've set up their own business is, is also quite common. Great. Yeah. We, we can talk for a lot Absolutely. longer. Yeah. Um, thank <laughs> you for your, um, for your passion and, and uh, this great information. My pleasure. Um, thank you all for being part of our graduate online information series. Um, Feel free to jump online and uh, talk to one of our um, people who are there waiting for you or book in for a, a phone consultation. Um, thank you for being part of this and have a really good night. Uh, have a really good week.